right, let's go and review over the math problems that I assigned last lesson. Page 291, I told you to uh, look over problem number nine. It wasn't necessarily homework, so you didn't have to do it. Uh, let's take a look at it now. Go ahead and read problem nine for us if you would, Kendall. An object six centimeters high is located 12 centimeters from a concrete mirror with a radius of 20 all right, so they give us this information. We kind of looked at this yesterday. 6.0 centimeter height of object, 12 centimeter distance of object, 20 point centimeter radius. The purpose of the radius is to allow us for a mirror to get the focal length, remember? Now for a lens, focal length, remember, lens maker equation depends on both radii of curvature, also depends on the index of refraction, but for a mirror, radius or focal length is half the radius of curvature. So the focal length here class is 10. 10 point centimeters. In solving for the position of the image or the D sub I, what equation do we need to use here, class? One, nine, 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 No, in all fairness, if you'd want to reduce the y plus 1 over d sub o, it's the same thing. But the way we memorized it for consistency sake, 1 over f equals 1 over d sub o plus 1 over d sub i. So as simple as putting it into your calculator, take the reciprocal of the, uh, well, I'm finding the d sub i though. So what do I need to do with this 1 over d sub o? Subtract it over the other side, subtract the reciprocal of the object distance from the reciprocal of the focal length. So let's actually start by taking the reciprocal of which is 10, so reciprocal 10 minus reciprocal of 12, and we get this really crazy number. That doesn't look right. What do we need to make sure we remember? Take the reciprocal, and what is the image distance, class? 60 point centimeters is two six things, right? Yes. All right, then letter B asks for us to find the uh, size of the image. Well, size of the image, meaning height of the image. It might help us if we went ahead and found letter C first, the lateral magnification. How do I find lateral magnification? I have two different equations for it. Class? Say that again? DI over DO. Ooh, forgot something very important. Negative. Negative DI over DO. And what's the uh, other, the actual definition of lateral magnification? HI over HO. Well, we can't use HI over HO, but I could use the negative DI over DO to find the lateral magnification. So we'll take the uh, negative 60 that I just found over the 12. You might be able to do that in your head. Mm -hmm. Negative five. Of course, we do want two sig figs. Mm -hmm. And units? No. None. Very good. No units on lateral magnification. Centimeters cancel. At this point, now that we know lateral magnification is negative five, I could simply say that HI over HO equals negative five. And since we already know that the h sub o is six, h sub i divided by six equals negative five, multiply both sides by six, we're gonna get for the height of the image. Negative 30. Two sig figs, and this time we do want the centimeters. The alternative, of course, and this is the way I believe they intended to be solved, was you could put these two together in a proportion and solve that way as well. Notice the d sub i is positive. What does a positive d sub i always mean, class? Real. Positive d sub i always means real. In the distance, the location is in the position you would expect it to be. Negative means it's the opposite spot of where you expect. So it's a real image. What does a negative height indicate? Mm -hmm. It's inverted. And um, if we look at the absolute value of the lateral magnification, we notice that it is okay. greater than 1, so therefore it is enlarged. Right, questions on problem 9? Either of you happen to work it in advance? Did. did you get it all correct? I switched um, and got reduced instead of enlarged. I'm sorry, say that again? I got reduced instead of enlarged. Oh, okay. So you had all the numeric answers correct. You just analyzed it wrong. You saw the negative and thought reduced. Okay? All right, because here's the idea. The image is five times as big as the object. It just happens to be upside down. So the negative just kind of carries over and showing it's upside down. All right, Kendall, questions? All right, let's take a look at page 308 next. Very similar problem, admittedly. We want to make sure that we're not thrown for a loop if uh, lenses appear instead of mirrors. 
And go ahead and read problem number 18 there on page 308 for us. Audrey. An object 3 inches high is located 10 inches in front of a converging lens of focal length 12 inches. Find A the position and B the size of the image. C describe the image. Alright, so object 3 inches high, that was 3.00 inches, so we're looking at 3 sig figs this time. Also using inches, which is not one of our SI units, uh, but it's a practical unit for us here in the United States. Uh, located 10 inches, that would be your image distance, 10.0 inches, in front of a converging lens with a focal length of 12.0 inches. If it were a diverging lens, what would be true of the focal length class? It'd be a negative focal length. It says letter A, find the position of the image. So we need to find the D sub I once again. What equation do we need to use, class? And once again, since we're solving for the D sub I, we will subtract the 1 over D sub O so that it's equal to the 1 over D sub I. Uh, take the reciprocal 12 minus reciprocal 10. And then don't forget to take the reciprocal of the answer. And uh, works out in that numerically, very similar to the last one. What's our D sub I? Now it's a negative 60.0 inches. We have one of the three sig figs in the units. What does a negative D sub I indicate, class? It's a virtual image. It's formed in the location we would not expect for a lens, meaning the image doesn't go through the lens. It appears to stay on the same side as the lens of the lens. As the object, letter B says find the size of the image. It never references finding lateral magnification, and that's okay, but I would find the height kind of thinking about lateral magnification using a proportion class. Conveniently, by the way, the negative on the 60 and the negative here would cancel to give me a positive 60 over 10. Here, of course, the object height is 3. We're finding the image height. And uh, what do we get for that image height? And I'm getting a positive 18.0 inches. Notice that the image height is positive. What does that suggest? Positive height. Okay. Upright. It's not under the ground, so it's being like six feet under it. Anyway, upright image. Now, one last thing we need to figure out, is it enlarged, reduced, or neither? And we didn't find the lateral magnification, but just a quick comparison. The image is 18 inches tall. The object is 3 inches tall. We would say that the image clearly is enlarged once again. Right. Now, that doesn't mean that on the test, because these were both enlarged. They will necessarily both be enlarged on the test, but again, we would compare if the image height had come out to 2 inches. Then that's smaller than three. So class, we would say, reduce. What if the image height had come out to exactly three or negative three? Then it'd be unmagnified. Okay. Questions on lenses, mirrors. All right, page three hundred forty. Page three hundred forty. Coulomb's law of electric force: the force of attraction between unlike charges, the force of repulsion between like charges. Go ahead and read problem number two for us, if you would, Kendall. Anytime you're finding the force related to charges, we need Coulomb's law of electric force. What is that class? And technically the absolute values of the charges. So the fact that one is a positive charge, the other is a negative charge, we say, well, positive times negative is negative. Well, no, not in this case. We're just going to ignore the um, values there, just write that absolute values. We need to plug in the K value. What is that K value? Mm -hmm. We don't need to care about the units here. It's Newton's times meter squared or Coulomb squared. We do need to plug in the two charges, again, ignoring their signs here. The first charge Kendall said was? Uh, that was Coulomb's. The next one was? All right, and they were separated by a distance of? Centimeters. But remember, the K value is Newtons times meters squared for Coulomb squared. 
So the distance between the charges must be in meters before we can square it. So 5.45 centimeters becomes... 0 .0545. Yeah. Remember, going from centi e negative 2 to just plain old meters e0 up to left 2. Um, so 0 .0545 meters, that'll be squared. Plug it all into the calculator. 8.999 times... Oops, that was one E7. Whoops. Ah, that's a problem. And uh, not a strong force here. What do we end up with? One point five seven. Good. One point five seven to a point zero one five seven. Blah blah blah. Uh, let's see. We're looking at two sig figs, correct? So uh, 0 0.016 and force again measured in newtons. Mm -hmm. Or 1.60 negative 2 newtons. All right, questions on Coulomb's law. All right, from there we started dealing with circuits, page 398. Page 398. Problem number two, read that for us if you would, Audrey. A fine platinum wire, 0.1 millimeters in diameter. All right, find the resistance in a wire. What's that equation class? R equals row times L over L. There we go. So the row and the L can both go in the top, and the cross-sectional area will go in the bottom. It is important to remember, by the way, that the cross-sectional area of a wire is generally found using the equation okay. pi r squared. So really what we want is pi. This will be our radius that gets squared. Let's start with the uh, row. Row stands for what? Yep, resistivity, yeah. the resistivity. Now again, we've also used row to mean density. That was earlier in the year. Um, so again, scientists, you know, they only have so many letters to choose from. And so <laughs> row for resistivity in this particular case. And I guess they'd be figured that electricians usually aren't dealing with density. And uh, chemists are usually not dealing with electrical resistance. So maybe that's the way they justify it. Anyway, I digress. We need to look up platinum. Now on the exam, this number would be given to you. We had to flip back to page 382 and look it up. What was the row value for uh, platinum? And a very low resistivity because it's a conductor. Okay? It has a lot of delocalized electrons. Um, it's not a great conductor like some of the other metals, but it's still a conductor. Uh, the length of the wire. Do we need to change that to meters? No, because remember the resistivities in our book and resistivities you'd be given on the exam are going to be ohms times centimeters. So we need another centimeters to get ohms times centimeters squared. Remember the area will be in centimeters squared. Pi r squared, the r then must be in centimeters. But number one, they didn't give us an r. Number two, it wasn't in centimeters anyway. They gave us a... Point one millimeters is the... Diameter, right? Because this is usually, again, diameter is usually what we think of when we think of any kind of circular cross section, right? How big is it across? So it's a natural way to put it, but we need to change that into radius. 0 0.1 millimeter, if you cut that in half to get the radius, is 0 0.05 millimeters. But I don't want millimeters, I want centimeters. I'm going from an E negative 3 to an E negative 2. Is the E going up or down? Oh. Careful. From negative 3, picture the y axis, right? Negative 3 to negative 2 would be going up just one unit. She up and left him. In this case, he up and left y'all. So, anyway, he up and left y'all. Okay, so we're going to move the decimal to the left one place. 0 0.005 centimeters. And that's what we should have plugged into the calculator there. So we've got our 1.1 e to the negative 5, not forgetting the negative on the answer, times 50 divided by the pi and divided by the square. And we usually don't have this much resistance in our circuitry. This one, by the way, is basically, the, you know how in a circuit we talked about the resistor? This is the resistor, okay? They used a the little piece of aluminum, uh, aluminum, platinum wire to be the resistor. And we get 
Rounding off to sig figs, you'll notice here, everything's one sig fig. So we really can just say seven resistance measured in. And there we go. Questions on that. But just be careful with units. Take your time, think through. By the way, if you're like, oh, how do I take the diameter and cut it in half? My brain is tired. I'm a senior exam week, graduation coming up. Well, you type 0.1 and you divide by two. And you let your calculator do it. If you're going to, you know, don't blow it. You've got a calculator. Use it there if needed. Uh, dropping down to number four. Um, Go and read that one for us. Kendall. When you talk about surcharging the business, All right. They give us voltage. They give us amps, which is current and ask about resistance, what's our equation that relates to those? We actually have a name for it. Ohm's law is, it's very important you remember Ohm's law, okay, V equals IR. However, we're solving for resistance in this particular case, so we'll rearrange it. R equals V over I. Right, so those three variables, if you have a problem involving voltage, current, or resistance, Start with V equals IR, rearrange it to whatever you need. If you need current, V over R. If you need voltage, we'll leave it as it is. If you need resistance, V over I. So we have 12 volts, we have 4.8 amps, pretty simple division. And uh, what do we get for the resistance in that circuit? 2.5 ohms of resistance. All right, the last problems I gave you were drawn on the chalkboard. They were a couple of networks I encouraged you to solve ahead of time. Let's go ahead and take a look at those networks. L Network Uno. I gave you an 18 volt battery. I said the current is going to flow through a 2.0 ohm resistor before then splitting and going down two separate pathways. One pathway affords 6.0 ohms of resistance. The other pathway so that's a 10 point ohms of resistance. Current then reconnects, flows through a single ohm resistance before returning to the battery. One last resistance in the way, a 3.0 ohm resistance. All right, did we take the time to work it? Just out of curiosity, and I'm required to and encouraged to. Yes, did not get a chance to. All right, we'll be generous. All right, so first things first then, Kendall. Um, since you did not do it, Audrey's checking her work, you're doing this work, what should we simplify first? Uh, six and ten. I would. I know technically we said we should simplify any simple series. Our, I think our brain can tell us four without actually writing it. So I'm with you. I actually would approach the six and ten first. And then we'll say that the six ohm, ten ohms gives us... I've got the same thing, 3.75 ohms of resistance in this little area. All right, then. Um, so there's two or four, and then you just add them up. To get? Um, 9.75. All right, Audrey, did you get 9.75 ohms rounded, since it's two sig figs to 9.8? Well, you didn't necessarily have to round, because I didn't put sig figs on the board for you. So if you left 9.75, that's fine. I went ahead and went with two here. 9.75, 9.8 ohms. All right, the next thing we need to find, Kendall, is always the current in the circuit, the total current the battery is able to push through. Um, 1.84. Good, 1.84, blah, blah, blah. I'll go ahead and round it off and say 1.8. Um, Stay with me, 1.8 amps of current. We're gonna store that in the memory value. And then from there, we need to set up our chart. Listing out the resistances, the current that goes through each resistance, and the IR drop at each resistance. We have two ohms, six ohms, and ten ohms kind of get stuck together. By the way, notice the biggest resistances were in parallel. That helped to diminish their overall resistance, the one ohm and the three ohm. Uh, some of these are very easy, Kendall. Mm -hmm. The two, the one, and the three are all very easy. We already know what to put in for the current. All 1.8 amps. And therefore, we can get the IR drop very easily. 
3.16. So rounded 3.7 volts. All right, then the uh, one, of course, is just going to be um, 1.8 volts. And then the three. Um, 5.5. Audrey, so far, so good. Ooh, okay, question, Audrey. You got, did you get total current? You got this number? Somewhere about 12. Oh, okay, so that is it. So you got the 9.8, but you didn't get the current. Remember, current is going to be the voltage divided by the resistance, and that's where we get the 1.8. So you had 4.8 for all three of these. So you had like, I don't know, 9.6 and 4.8 and stuff like that. Okay. All right, now we come to, tell you what, go ahead and redo these with us then, Audrey. Just use 1.846, you'll be close enough. Um, let's go ahead and get the parallel. And it's important to start by looking at the whole parallel. What do I know about the whole parallel, Kendall? Of, we also know that the whole parallel gets 1.846 amps of so the only thing we don't know about the parallel is its voltage. But we can find it easily. How much voltage does the parallel use? Uh, 6.9. Wouldn't hurt to put this into memory too at this point. All right, now what do we need to remember about that voltage number? It goes into each branch. Each branch gets 6.92 volts. All right, so then we look at each branch. Let's just start with this branch. What do I know about this branch? Um, six ohms. Six ohms, and of course, I've already written it, 6.92 volts. So if I know the volts and I know the ohms, I can find the? Um, Not the ohms. <laughs> the amps, the current, right? How do I find current? To get 1.153 dot dot amps goes through this this uh, branch, but if 1.153 amps goes through this branch, Kendall, um, it goes through the six ohm resistor because that's what's in the branch. So the six ohm resistor that's in the branch gets the 1.15 or roughly 1.2 amps of current. If I know the six, there's six ohms and there's 1.153 amps, that'll give me the IR drop, which we kind of already know. The 6.92 volts, because all of the voltages got lost in that single resistance. There was only one in the branch. We come to the other branch. Audrey, we already know what about the other branch? There's 10 ohms. And of course, we also know what I've already written, the 6.92 volts. Knowing those two things, I can find the current to be 0.692 amps. And if 0.692 amps goes into that branch, then that's how much current goes across the uh, um, resistor. resistor, right? 0.692 amps in there, that's how much current has to go across the 10 ohm resistor, because that's how much current's there. <laughs> and if we know the resistance and we know the current, we can multiply to get the 6.9 volts. And of course, it makes sense that the voltage would be constant in the parallel. Voltage would vary in series. Current was constant in series. Current varied in parallel. Questions on the first network. All right. Let's take a look at the next network that I gave you. And then we'll be done with our review, ready for our exam. watching on YouTube, bells are a suggestion. <laughs> At least that's how I've always treated them, right? Um, my last day of, your, of ever instructing you. Let's be true to form, right? Let's just ignore the bell and keep right on going. All right, so let's say we have, I'm going to go three sig figs this time, 9.00 volts. Current goes through a 1.00 ohm resistance, and then it splits two ways. It could go through a path featuring 3.00 ohms and 5.00 ohms, or it could go through a path featuring 4.00 ohms of resistance. Current will reconnect and pass through a 
2.00 ohm resistor before returning to the battery. All right, Kendall. Audrey, you did this one already also? Okay. So Kendall's going to get our equivalent resistance. Let me try again. Oh, <laughs> you forgot to take your reciprocal. <laughs> there we go. Good, because you got 0.375 yeah. for all of this instead of taking the reciprocal. So mm -hmm. all of this became 2.6 repeating ohms. Adding those together gave you 5.6 repeating ohms, which rounds to three sig figs. Um, 5.6 ohms of equivalent resistance. All right, from there we find the current. Um, 1.58. And rounded actually 1.588, so rounded off to three sig figs. 1.59. Nine amps of current. Audrey, get on those first two numbers. All right, we come to our. chart then. And uh, we have two that we'll fill in right away. resistor. Did we get those two correct, Audrey? All right, good to go on the start of this one. Then we have to come to the whole parallel. What do we know about the whole parallel? Um, what else do we know? Um, and of course, we'll use the memory value, not the uh, rounded value there, which tells me then the voltage of the whole thing. Did you get that number, Audrey? Okay, go ahead and get it now. Just IRV equals IR, so just multiply the two numbers. Once we know the voltage of the whole thing, I'm going to go to Audrey now. That number is the voltage through each branch. This branch and this branch each get 4.235 volts. But, Audrey, what else do I know about that top branch? But total, there's eight ohms of resistance in that top branch. What do we know about the bottom branch, Kendall? Um, there's just the four ohms, of course, because it's just the one resistor. Um, so if I know there's 4.235 volts in that top branch and there's eight ohms in that branch, Audrey, that tells me how much okay. current goes through the top branch. 0.529 amps goes through that branch, and once 0.529 amps has elected, quote unquote, to go through that branch, that tells me that that must be for the through which one specifically? The three and the five. They're both in that branch, so they both get the 0.529 amps. Because if that's what's in the branch, and they're in the branch, that's what they get. It's like Mom's like, uh, Audrey goes, oh, Mom, what are we having for supper tonight? She says, chicken nuggets. And Audrey's like, yeah, I love dino nuggets. No, but what if, what if Audrey said, oh, Mom, Kendall gets to have pheasant under glass. Well, you're in this household, Audrey, so you're going to eat chicken nuggets. You're in this branch, so you're going to get 5.529 amps. I don't care what the other branch gets. You're in this one, so you get that much current. That analogy? Anyway, all right. <laughs> and if we know 0.529 amps that was in the branch, therefore they're in that branch, that's what they get. Um, we can tell the IR drop <clears throat> at each of them. 
1.59 volts here and 2.65 volts here. By the way, notice collectively that's the 4.235 volts. Some of it here, some of it there. All right. Um, now we come to the lower branch and we're to Kendall. We're at Kendall's house now. Kendall has pheasant under glass because there's only four ohms of resistance in her household. <laughs> How much current goes into this branch, Kendall? Um, 1.056. 1.058, blah, 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 rounded 1.06 amps. And once 1.06 amps goes into that branch, it goes to the 4 ohm resistor. And therefore, we know how much voltage gets used up. 4.24. All 4.24 volts that went into the branch gets used up because that was the only resistor there. All right. Do we feel like we've got a good handle on these? Okay, we've been going over them quite a bit recently, but we want to make sure we went over them one last time for your benefit. Questions at all on this? All right, any last questions before we get ready for our exam? Any last questions? Any last words? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> any last comments at all before we get ready for exam? All right, well, we'll end here, and we'll be ready with the exam in about five minutes.